Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so here we are. Dan Electrum Charging Solutions in our EV or electric vehicle charging technology zone for our second segment with Tony Giovintu. Um, Executive Director, Condominium Homeowners Association. I got that one right. You did. Yeah, so <laughs> nice job, eh? So, so more questions, of course, about uh, Strata Councils, how they manage and deploy electric vehicle charging infrastructure. This one's going to be more, the first segment was, was um, more about the process. This is moving into the installation part of it. A little bit about technology and, and, and the type of chargers. I mean, it's not a deep dive by any means, but here we go with our uh, questions that we have. Site assessments. Uh, what, how important is it for strata councils to make sure they know exactly what's going on in their building in terms of electrical infrastructure and what they're going to deploy and the technologies? And well, I think when you're using any kind of public collective parking area in a uh, high-rise building, apartment building, even some townhouses have underground garages. Um, anything that's going to be collectively common property public use, uh, you need to do a complete site assessment. You know, how is the parking designated? Um, is there parking that we can use specifically for electric vehicle charging stations? How does our electrical services um, how are they going to meet the capacity of what we need? Do we need to do upgrades? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have to do any coring in the slab to get a line to go from one to the other, which by the way is really easy, not a big complicated issue. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, you need to, you need to do a complete site assessment before you can even begin to answer the questions and get to the next part. Once you've done the site ass assessment, work with your consultants, work with your service provider who you're working with, get the site assessment done. The rest of it's easy. Yeah. Uh, the hard, the hard part is the site assessment yeah. because you can't, give an honest answer of whether we're going to do is just permit stations or not, unless you know what your site conditions are. Absolutely. It's not even worth going yep. there until you've done that. No. And, and I mean, speaking, I mean, we, we do assessments all the time and uh, you know, it, it really, it, without doing that site assessment, you're really working with imaginary numbers and concepts. So uh, extremely important. Uh, electrical infrastructure or, so I guess the question is, should we be, and when we're faced with this too, an owner in a building says, I want electric vehicle charging, Strata says, yeah, just you know, run the infrastructure to his stall, give him his charger, have a nice day. But should Strata councils consider installing infrastructure that supports future demand and that's scalable? Well, I think we should, for every one of our building systems, we should always look into the future because conditions will change in the future, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that owner may have bought that, bought a unit, they may have leased, um, been assigned that parking space, that's their electric charging station, they sell what's happening now. Mm -hmm. You have to think into the future for all of these little sequences and circumstances. And the same thing for infrastructure. Why are you spending the money and getting a grant and incentives to just simply put one line in for one charging station? Um, at the very least, why are you not improving your electrical service, mm -hmm. your grid? It, it might be, you might find that the costs are nominal to, be, to expand to four, six, or eight potential possible stations yeah. at the same time. You already have the infrastructure for the future. You don't have to revisit this problem. You've done the evaluations of your site. Um, it's definitely a cost savings if you do more at once yes. than if you come back to it in the future, and it's easier to manage over the long term. Agreed, agreed. Um, this is a really good question. <clears throat> From our perspective, we're seeing a shift in the market in terms of basic chargers versus smart chargers or uh, network-based chargers for a whole bunch of reasons. But what should, what should Stratas be considering in their building when they're deploying charging infrastructure? Are, are they looking at smart charging or should they be just doing the basic charger? What's your feeling on that? Um, I'm gonna pre-qualify this with no one knows what technology five years from now is going to look like. Yes. Um, and that's one of the challenges when people say, what should we do? I'd like to just tell you, this is what you should do for the future. Um, but technology changes. You know, we just look at the change in um, technology with computers and cell phones and, and communication services, it changes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do see the trend towards, well, which I think is going to stick, is the trend towards smart chargers. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not only the ability um, to be able to um, collectively gather information, monitor consumption, chargebacks, you know, direct billing, you know, your, your vehicle's plugged into this meter, this meter here is automatically transmitting to the meter of your unit, and it's automatically billing your unit. Mm -hmm. It resolves the whole problem of user fees of who's paying electrical services, Absolutely. right? It's less administration for the Strata Corporation, property manager doesn't have to worry about it, mm -hmm. 
it's a very seamless process. So I think smart charges as we move forward are definitely going to be the better advantage. My anticipation is we'll probably see better technology even after yeah. that. And that's our feeling as well. So um, <clears throat> another really great question. Where do these charging stations get installed in terms of the available parking spaces in a, uh, in a parkade area? 32,000 strata corporations in the province, no two of them the same. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of variations of the different types of building configurations, use, access, parking, leases, licenses, multiple users, mixed use, commercial, residential. Mm -hmm put all of those things together and there's no simple answer. Okay. But, but you really, what you're really asking, I think is, are they being installed just in an isolated spot for one space or are they being installed in a collective zone for multiple users, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, that's more of a broader question. And, it, and if it's possible to do a zone for multiple parking mm -hmm. and multiple charging, and the Strata Corporation has access to multiple spaces they can do that, then that would be the most economic yeah. and the most prudent option to do, yeah. right? You can control it easily, go to your owners, you get approval for it, yeah. the infrastructure is up. Um, it's the much, it's the, by far the easiest way of doing it. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a building where all of your parking has been pre-assigned and the Strata can't reassign parking, or there's no parking available, that charging station is probably going to get installed just in those spaces where the okay. users want it. Okay, uh, so one thing that we get asked is can owners swap stalls within their facility? Um, is there a way to reassign parking? It, sometimes there is. Okay. Uh, it's complicated. Uh, it, it may require a vote at a general meeting. Okay. Um, if the parking was designated as limited common property by the developer, or if there were lease assignments for very specific parking spaces, mm -hmm. that might not be possible without the consent of everyone. It gets okay. very complicated right. at that point. Yep. You know, part, of the, part of the challenge here on how do you deal with parking and charging stations is the technology of what we're dealing with is far ahead of kind of the archaic way we've yeah. created property designations. Yes, absolutely. And, and so it, yeah. and that we always see that, right? Mm -hmm. Legislation is always way behind mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, when we go into this, you really, it, like you do your site assessment for your mm -hmm. feasibility, you have to look at how your parking is designated yeah. and then figure out what might be possible. Yeah. Uh, and, it, th and that's the option. Yeah, I mean, typically when we're looking at a site, it's for cost reasons, the stall is closest to the electrical room. Yes. That, unfortunately, that is, always isn't the case. There's right. times when it's the farthest stall away from the electrical room. But well, but, you, you, absolutely. But yeah. you know, I, I I just look at my own building. In my own building, uh, we have people with electric vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some of them are on P3, and our electrical yeah. room is on P1. Absolutely. Uh, and so it means that there's going to have to be some significant infrastructure upgrade to put them in. Yeah. Um, when it comes right down to it, the people who have the electric vehicles are actually quite happy to pay for the infrastructure cost. Yeah. So the building actually benefited from this infrastructure cost what? that someone else paid for. So it's kind of like, so why aren't you doing this? Well, yeah, and we, mm -hmm. I mean, our position is talk to everybody else in the building. I'm sure, I mean, it's not like nobody doesn't know about what's happening or at least I know hasn't considered purchasing an electric vehicle. There could be three or four other individuals in the building who are all looking at doing this. And again, when we start working together, costs start to rationalize pretty quickly. Well, and if the average consumer in buildings is the same as us, I think we're in the situation where our vehicle probably has two to five years of its life cycle left. Yeah. We're just waiting for that life cycle to finish yeah. to have a good economic solution for Absolutely. an electric vehicle, because yeah. that would be our next transition yeah. is to, into an electric vehicle. So, Absolutely. you know, that's, I think there are, there are probably a lot more people in that position than there are on the market right now looking for one. Yeah. But I think we're all waiting for um, a really feasible solution. Excellent. So with respect, just back up a little bit here, in terms of how or what stalls we can utilize for charging, where would people go to get that information? Because it, you know, it does sound like you do have to, to make sure that you understand what the situation is in your building. So where do they go to do that? Well, talk to your strata council first, yeah. but you need to get a copy of the registered strata plan to see how the parking is designated. Okay. So is it common property? Is it limited common property? And in some very rare circumstances, is it part of a strata lot? Okay. Uh, so that's the first thing you need to do. Okay. Um, talk to your strata council, find out is there parking, are there parking spaces available near mm -hmm. the electrical bolts okay. uh, where you can access electrical yep. service, right? Um, if that's possible, even better. Uh, okay. But if not, well, then what will it take to go beyond that? Um, if the parking has been pre-designated by the owner-developer through a lease, um, there's two 
options than that. One, they may have designated very specific parking spaces or the lease may be generic. We are simply providing you with a parking space or parking yep. spaces um, that are not necessarily dedicated. Um, okay. in, and so there might be some flexibility to move those around. You don't know without without really resurrecting the documents and doing a little bit of detective work, exactly right? What's going on, yeah. and, and it's not always that easy. Uh, certainly, you know, um, our staff in our office can help strata councils figure that out Perfect. because it isn't always that easy to figure it out. Okay, excellent. And last question, another really good question actually, is when deploying charging infrastructure, do we, do we want to maintain the same type or manufactured uh, charger that's or provider that's in that facility? Well, I think technology that is compatible for every user today as well as for the future is something that's really important to look at. Yeah. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where someone has installed a station or you've installed stations that are going to be obsolete quickly, yeah. right? You, you want to look for as much broad compatibility as possible. Absolutely. And And yes, we have different car manufacturers and different um, uh, technologies, but there is a fairly broad consensus of compatibility in the industry. And so when you're looking at charging stations, deal, try and deal with the same service provider, the same consultants, and stick with um, a product that is going to be compatible as much as possible. You know, and again, look into the future. You know, I would hazard a guess that maybe not too far in the future, we may have charging stations that don't require plugins. Well, we feel the same way. It's going to get interesting really quickly. It is, yeah. <laughs> so there you have it from the industry expert. Um, again, any comments, questions, place them uh, below. We'll be happy to get back as quickly as, as possible and respond. And again, you can always check out the CHOA website or ECS's website for any other information. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll be back at you with more content before you know. Thank you. Thank you.